Hi, it's Dwyer. RichardDwyer.com, DwyerCrime.blog, both free sites. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me open this video by pointing out that we're going to point out injustice even when the majority of the public disagrees with me. Right? I think it's very important to stand up for people who are being mistreated in the passion of the moment. You have that situation taking place right now in Denver, Colorado. Right now, this is not a partisan video, right? I've already voted. I did not vote for Trump or Biden, right? Let's be clear here. My agenda is really just to shine a light on someone who's been charged with murder. The murder charge against the leftist security guard, and we'll put the word security guard in quotes because I understand there's some dispute on that, right? Apparently this gentleman, the shooter, did not have a license to be a security guard in Denver, Colorado, right? But understand, whatever his status, he should not be charged with murder for the shooting that took place at the recent Denver protest. In my description to this YouTube video, I have a link to a photo from what preceded the shooting. What I want people to do, and I haven't posted it in the video because of copyright concerns, but what I want people to do is to look at the shooter's hat as he's being slapped by the person who ends up dead just seconds before the shooting takes place. Understand, the victim, we'll put that in quotes, the victim attacks the shooter, hits him in the face so hard that his cap turns around on his head. The shooter is being attacked. You'll notice in the photo too that the shooter does not have anything in his hands. The gun is not drawn until after the attack. Let's go one step further. The photos that show the victim, again in quotes, spraying mace at the shooter as the shooter fires doesn't accurately represent the short window of time in which the shooter had to make a decision on whether his life was in danger. Right? Understand. Guy comes over to you slaps you in the face, takes a step back, is reaching in his pocket by his side, right? What I want people to do too is in the photo that I have in the description of this video is to look at the victim's hands. Folks, you don't know what the guy's right hand is reaching for. You just don't know. So, on imperfect information, after being slapped in the face, and then having the guy take steps back and reach in his pocket, is it reasonable for someone to feel that the guy might be reaching for a gun. Quite frankly, I think it is. Right? The situation happens quickly. The victim pulls out mace. 
let me ask you, I mean, how many people are going to see someone pull out something and know with certainty as the shooter is reaching for his gun, right? Are you prepared to risk your life on the idea that the guy who just came up to you, the stranger who just came up to you and slapped you in the face, knocked your hat off, is reaching for mace and not a pistol of some kind, right? These things happen in microseconds, right? You have to make split-second decisions. Split-second decisions. Now, let me just say this, and I don't say it lightly. Absent new information we don't know about some pre-existing relationship between these two men where, you know, the shooter told someone else that he was going to kill him or the shooter made threats to the guy that he was going to kill him before the guy hits him in the face, right? Absent something like that, right? Or the shooter telling people, hey, I want to kill someone. I'm going to shoot someone at this protest. Absent information like that, I don't see how the shooter should have even been charged with murder. If he made a miscalculation after getting hit in the face, if he thought his life was in danger but his life wasn't in danger and we feel that the reasonable person in the very short time window that takes place here would have realized, oh, this guy who just hit me in the face, who then has his right hand by his side, what would be a holster for people who are panicked, was instead pulling out a can of mace. Right? If we reach the conclusion that the reasonable person wouldn't have felt that their life was in danger, then somebody in the comment section, especially someone from law enforcement, Tell me why that wouldn't be manslaughter. How do you charge this guy with murder? In my opinion, really, worst case, if they wanted to overcharge the guy, they would have charged him with manslaughter, not murder. This happens fast. The guy's been hit in the face. His cap has been knocked off. The guy who hit him then reaches for something. I'm sorry, if I was on this jury, I would believe this was self-defense. Proper self-defense. Folks, in the United States, folks don't have a right to show up to a protest and then decide they're going to hit you in the face. Not only that, after the guy hits him in the face, he doesn't have his hands up, moving back to indicate, hey, I got nothing in my hands. No, this is different. His hand's down here. He's reaching for something. At that moment, as quickly as things happen, in my opinion, your life's in danger. Right after the fact, people can take still shots and can say, oh, he pulled out mace. Oh, he sprayed him with mace. Folks, it happened so fast. I don't believe the shooter knew his life wasn't in danger. I believe the assumption that, wow, this guy just hit me in the face, knocked off my hat, now he's reaching for something, right? Keep in mind, the security guard guy's reaching for his gun at that point. Right? I think this is a self-defense situation. I think we're in emotionally polarizing times where, for whatever reason, Folks like this who've been hit in the face by strangers at protests are getting charged with murder for defending themselves.
This is an outrage. I understand many of you watching this video are going to believe that this guy acted incorrectly. But I just don't see how a jury of 12 could reach a unanimous guilty verdict here. Especially if the slap in the face was initiated by the victim. So again, I urge you to look at the photo. There's an even better film clip on Twitter that doesn't seem to have mass distribution that shows how bang bang it is. Right? You see the victim in quotes hit the guy back away reach for something and then get shot if you find that the time window is too short for the shooter to fully process the idea that the guy who just attacked him was not trying to kill him then tell us about that in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.